Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, I am. Uh, I'm just excited to be here. I'm excited to, to worship with you guys. Uh, if you were here last week, you know that uh, we did things a little bit different. Uh, we spent time going, uh, just celebrating 2021. Uh, and, I, and I told you that I don't ever want us to come to a place. We don't celebrate what God does, right? You know, the Israelites did that. They got in the wilderness. They, instead of celebrating that God brought them out of Egypt, they complained about it, right? They did. Uh, and so we don't ever want to get to be when we forget to celebrate all that God is doing. So last week we paused and we spent some time celebrating God. And I told you that that was going to continue into this week as we walk through Psalm 85 and we, we discuss what I think is the biggest need for the Journey Community Church. As we move into 2022, so if you've got a Bible with you, open to Psalm 85. If you don't have one, there's one within arm's reach of you. We should be on page 330 in those Bibles. Uh, this morning, uh, as you're turning there, let me give you just a quick recap. If you weren't here last week, or maybe you were serving in our Journey Kids ministry last week, let me give you a quick recap of the things that we talked about um, as, we, as we talked about last week. And I, I get really excited, not just being the church, um, but I, I get excited that we get to expand the church, if that makes any sense. Um, I was talking to a guy this week, and he used the, the term um, that, that, that we should be making heaven proud. And I thought, I mean, that's, a, that's a good word. Believe that. Does our church understand what that means? Like when I tell you, hey, we should be helping heaven get crowded. Amen. That means we're sharing our faith with so many people. And I love that we get to be that. I love that we are God's plan A for reaching far from God people. And so as we move into 2022, I'm asking the church to pray dangerous prayers. I'm asking the church to pray in three very specific situations. Number one, that we continue to reach far from God people. That will always be at the top of the list. If go. we stop praying for people who need Jesus, then I'm going somewhere else. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm out. Yeah. Number two, it's kind of our focus for this year, is I'm praying that God grows those who are here and helps you become stronger disciples. Praise God. Our mission statement says that we're here to create disciples who are gathering, growing, giving, and going. And this year, we're going to take an in-depth look at what that means. And we're going to focus on discipleship, starting with tonight, which we'll talk about later. And then third, we're asking that our, our, our same prayer we kind of pray every year, and God continues to, to answer it, so we're going to keep praying for it, is that our financial margin increases in 2022 so that we can become more self-sufficient as we move into our own building and pay our own bills and all those things. And so I want to walk with you real quick through what just five minutes of what we shared last week. And I started out talking about our administrative stuff, right? Uh, we, we kind of bounced through our, our mission statement, gathering, growing, giving, and going. And administratively, basically, I talked about our staff. And there weren't a whole lot of, of, of updates to give about our staff because our staff is amazing. We don't have turnover, which so far I love. Uh, but we did bring Bethany Conkle onto our staff uh, at the end of the year because she does so much. We, we saw uh, such an amazing um, uh, piece of, of adding her to our team. So we added her. Uh, and so that, that is, that's awesome. And, and I talked about how we want to add another pastor onto our staff in 2022 to help release some of the preaching duties off of me and to uh, oversee our growing ministry, uh, which is our discipleship, our small groups, community groups, stuff like that. Uh, the challenge there is our finances. Uh, we only pay our staff a very small monthly stipend. Um, I'm the only one who takes a salary. I don't take a full-time salary, but I think a, a part-time salary. Uh, and so the rest of our staff just gets a monthly stipend. And so we're asking uh, whoever that that next staff member is either they raise their own funds like I did, or they are by vocation. That's something we're praying for. Um, our kids' ministry, um, our journey kids is the strongest it's ever been. If you have kids, man, you know what I'm talking about. Colleen sends an email out every Sunday talking about, and if you're not getting these emails, go see her. If you're not opening these emails, shame on you. I'm going to shame you every week, all right, until you start opening these emails. But basically, it's just what your kids learn in our, in our kids' ministry. Right? So how you can help walk them through that the week. That way, it's not just something they heard for an hour. Listen to Church, listen, listen, listen. Our job is not to make your kids be strong Christians. That's your job as a parent. Your job as a parent is to raise disciples. You are to be discipling your kids. We are to equip you. And so if you don't open those 
emails, then you're not allowing Colleen to equip you. She's doing an amazing job. Thanks, Open Colleen. those emails. Let her continue to do the great job she's doing. But we talked about our challenge. As the church continues to grow, as we move into a new facility, and hopefully it grows even more, we add a second service, we need more volunteers. And so if you're willing to serve one hour a month, let Colleen know, please. Just, just reach out to Colleen at thisisthejourney.org. Go find her. Um, let her know, hey, I'm willing to sign up for one hour a week. That's all we're right. Or one hour a month. I'm sorry. A month. Yeah. One, one day a month. Um, our gathering ministry and our worship attendance grew by 17% last year. That's uh, that to me is incredible. That's uh, especially in a time when a lot of churches and a lot of uh, businesses are closing and declining because of COVID. Um, our church grew. And so Ben does an amazing job orchestrating our gathering environments. Uh, and so keep inviting people every single week. Um, I've seen what he and his team are doing over the new building. He gets ready to move in. And they're doing an amazing job over there as well. So it's going to be awesome once we get over there. It's going to be great. And so that's how we're going to continue to do number one on our prayer list to reach far from God's people is to keep inviting people to come to church. All right? Our growing ministry is our primary tool for helping you grow in your relationship with Christ. That's our community groups. Um, our seminars that we're going to do throughout the year, starting with tonight's seminar of uh, Clarifying the Bible. And so let me, let me tell you a good problem, and we'll talk about this here in our announcements. Um, I was really hoping that we did this the first year that our church was open to help some of our new believers really understand the Bible. And I was hoping that 25, 30 people would show up, sign up, and come to this event. There's 71 people registered right now. That's most of our church. Yeah, that's amazing. To me. That tells me you guys are hungry to grow, Amen. and you're hungry for relationships, community, stuff like that. So that, that keeps off tonight. I'm really excited about that. Um, but that's a two-week thing that's going to launch our community groups. And so, yes, we want you to come and have fun. But number two, we want you to be praying and asking God, okay, what group do you want me in this year? Because it doesn't just end with these two nights. This is the launch of the community groups. And so our community group leaders are going to be there. They're going to have a couple minutes to just share a little bit about their group. And we want you to find them, talk to them, learn about them, and join one of those groups. That way, when this ends on the 16th, you jump right into a community group. That's the goal. Um, so uh, Eric's been, been championing that for us while we don't have anybody in that role, and he's doing a great job. I told you, like, last year we relaunched after having a year off, and we launched with five groups, and they were amazing. And I just heard some cool stories of just people growing and relationships being built, and that gets me really excited. Um, and so that's our growth industry. <coughs> our giving, uh, as I mentioned last week, our giving was stronger than ever. And that's what has to happen for a church plan to grow. Uh, our giving was stronger than ever. In 2021, uh, uh, let me get this number right, we finished the year $36,000 over our budget. That is so that's cool. humongous. That's, cool. that's you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. And so we projected, uh, we, uh, we can only budget what we bring in the year before. So 2020 was 105000 By the way, from 2019 to 2020, we went from 65000 to 105000 Amazing. That was a huge jump. That's and then we went from 105000 to 139000 That's a huge jump. That's and so I can't even imagine where we're going to jump to in 2020. Thank you. And so thank, thank you for your gifts. Thank you for giving. And some of you may go, wow, we got $36,000 to spend. It doesn't work that way. Because as we grow in our giving, our funding, our, our supporters outside these walls that give every month, it goes down. And this is our biggest hit. Every year is our biggest hit. Because we drop, we drop. Some of them are done. Some of them made a three-year commitment, a four-year commitment. Thankfully, if you made a five-year commitment. Thankfully, one that had a three-year commitment said, hey, we love what you're doing. We want to come on for three more years. So we still have some support. But a lot of them have ended. Saying, hey, it's time for you to, to get off the baby food and start chewing your food. So we're, that's where we're at. So yeah, instead of us having a $36,000 extra expenditures in, 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 our, in our budget, we have 10000 because our giving went down and our, our giving went up. And so I hope you see how that works. And this is going to be our biggest hit. Um, and so let me just say this. We're about three tithing families away from being fully supported, not even meeting outside of the That's three, cool. Wow. Three families to tithe. Not just give, but tithe. Like 10% of their income. Wow. Um, that, that, is, that is awesome. So we hope that you'll take those steps to become a generous giver. We talked about our generosity journey, right? Uh, a a non-giver would go to an occasional giver. That means just occasionally dropping something in the offering. We want you to grow in this area. I don't know who gives what. I don't want to know who gives what. But it, this is something that Proverbs says that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. 
And so we want you to be a part of that. And so it's not just we want your money. We want you to experience the blessings of what God does when you begin to give uh, away your, your, your security to him. And so if you're a non-giver, we ask you to become an occasional giver. Just drop something in online or in the offering or, or whatever. If you're an occasional giver, to become a consistent giver. Just say, hey, every paycheck, I'm going to write this much off the very top and give it to the church every time I get paid. That's, a, that's a consistent giver. And then from there, we hope that you grow into a, a tither. Somebody who says, okay, I've been consistently giving. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that leave. I'm going to give God 10% off the very top of whatever my paycheck is. If my paycheck's $700, I'm writing 10% of 50 bucks. If my paycheck's $2,000, I'm writing a paycheck for, I'm writing a time check for 200 bucks. Whatever that looks like, we just pray that you would begin to get that point. And then if you're already a, a tither, is to become an extraordinary giver, which is beyond 10%. And I never ask anybody to do what I don't do myself. And so I, I'm not going to tell you what I give to your business, but I do give more than 10%. I've always wanted to be an extraordinary giver. And our kids, I told you this last week, they watched our budget one time. It's time they were working our budget. And they looked at it, they did the math of 10%. They're like, you make that much money? I was like, no. <laughs> I give more than we, we, we I give more than 10%. And so it's cool. This morning, my kids, I don't know which kid had their phones taken away, but an alarm went off at 8 a.m. <laughs> I'm getting ready, and I go in there, and I pull out their phone, and it says, 8 a.m. alarm on Sunday, bring your time. Oh. And I thought, man, my kids are understanding this. That's so great. My goal is that you'll walk through the generosity journey, and you'll grow in this area. So, spend a lot of time there. Our going ministry, I gave you nothing about our going ministry, uh, that we funded all of our outreach events last year. Every outreach event we did, we funded it ourselves. And so, um, as a church, we tied... $14,000 out of this building. That's 10% of what we brought in. We brought in, actually it's more than 10%. We brought in 139, which would 13,900 would be our tithe. We gave away 14,000. A little over 14,000. Right on. And so our church tithes too. We support missionaries. We give to, to Lottie Moon, Ray Roberts, um, the Metro Columbus Baptist Association. We, we give money to other ministries as well. And so I don't want you to think that we're not doing the church that we ask you to do as a member or a regular tender. And so that's who we are. That's what we do. We also sent our mission teams out for the first time last year. Um, we were praying to send out just one mission team. And we, we started with our role changers, our student mission team. And at the end of the year, we sent three mission teams on mission last year. Uh, that was incredible. We sent a, a world changers team for a week. We sent a family mission trip to Columbus for a day. And then we sent, um, I think, about 13, let's see, my seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, twelve 12, 12 people um, with two trucks and trailer loads full of the materials we collect in the community for tornado victims down in western Kentucky. And so uh, that, was, uh, that, that was right before Christmas. Yeah. And we had guys in our church just say, hey, I'll go. We had a kid. Is he in here? He's not in here. We had a kid. A, teen, a, a young kid said, hey, can I go? Can, can I be a part of that? Wow. And I was like, I want to let you miss school? Absolutely. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm a huge proponent of kids wanting to be involved in the community. Hey, guys, yeah. I don't miss a day of school. I am 100% okay with that. And to be around men that love Jesus and to be encouraged with other men who love Jesus as a, as a how old is that? How old is that? 11? As an 11 year old boy to have that kind of heart, jump in the truck and let's go. It was awesome. So if you guys see that kid, love it. Yeah. So that's huge. Um, and finally, we purchased our own facility. <laughs> So that was one of our three things we prayed about. God, would you, if it's your will, would you provide us a, a building that we can have as our home in 2021? We prayed for that. We prayed for that. We prayed for that. And up until the last day, we closed on December 30th, right? Uh, what an amazing thing. And, and Derek, I know you guys like this slide. Derek's our realtor. Uh, Derek's an amazing realtor. If you ever need realtor needs, this is Yeah, he is. Whatever. But uh, he, he walked us through the amazing process. I know it was hard uh, because there was a lot of back and forth on this deal. Uh, he made it happen. We closed before the end of the year. And we paid cash for it. That is so. Because God is a very And so it's crazy that as we pray, God does. Yeah. If it's his will, he does. And so that's why we ask you to pray dangerous prayers. Oh, there it is. Look at that. That's a sign that's great for our building. Future home of the Journey Community Church. <coughs> uh, that sign went up yesterday. And so I can't wait until that sign is replaced with a permanent sign when we get to move in. Uh, which will hopefully be just a, a few short weeks away. So before we spend our, our final time, 
celebrating and, and going through Psalm 85 and looking at that. Can we just pause one more time and celebrate the faithfulness and the provision of God for our church? And church yeah. 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 Well, in Psalm 85, we find what I believe is one of our greatest needs here at the Journey Community Church. Uh, we find one of the greatest needs for our country. Uh, and for us all personally, whether uh, you're a strong follower of Jesus or you're not at all, um, it, it's something that I believe that God is doing and needs to do through every single one of us. Um, it's an old word. It's kind of a, a scary word. If you didn't grow up in church for me, it's kind of like it has a weird connotation. But it's the word revival. For me as an EMT, I think about when we go to, to certain houses and somebody's apartment stopped. And our job is to revive them. Our job is to bring physical revival to their body. And that's what the scriptures are talking about. Ladies and church, we personally, our church, our country, our world needs revival. Yes, we need to it be does. Spiritually revived. And so Psalm 85 is a, is a song about revival. I'm going to read it and then we're going to talk about how it, it works in our church. And we're only going to go through eight verses. And here's what he said. He says, Lord, Show your favor to your land. You restore the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave your people's guilt. You covered all their sin. Thank you. You withdrew all your fury. You turned from your burning anger. Amazing. Return to us, God of our salvation, and abandon your displeasure with us. Do you see it, guys? Yeah. Do you see that this is still sticking relevant today? So... Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger for all generations? Will you not revive us again so that our people may rejoice wow. in you? Show us your faithful love, Lord, and give us your salvation. I will listen to what God will say, and surely the Lord will declare peace to his people, his faithful ones. And not let them go back to foolish ways. Mm, mm, mm. That is my desire. That's my desire for myself. That's my desire for you. That's my desire for God's church. And so what is revival and how does it happen? And why do we need it? I, I think there's not a whole lot of explanation that needs to go along with that. When we think about reviving somebody physically, we need revival spiritually. And we just spent weeks in a series talking about this, but let me just hit some of the basics here in Psalm 85. Psalm 85 was written right after the return of the Israelites from Babylonian captivity. And if you've read much of Daniel, you know what that's about. If you don't, stay tuned because we're going to go through it this year. Uh, but God was faithful in his promises of restoration to them. But on the other hand, they were returning to a homeland that had been devastated by the invasion of the Babylonians. Yep. And so they were returning home to destruction. Yeah. Everything that they had built, everything they loved was just destroyed. So that, that's kind of the context, quickly and specifically. But when we look into the Old Testament passages, what we have to ask ourselves is, what's the general principles that God's trying to teach us? What are those general things that we can apply living in a covenant relationship with God through every generation, not just their generation, not just our generation, but every generation in between? And in doing these, what are some truths that we can learn about revival as well as discovering some tools that God has chosen to use? And so here's what I think uh, they are for some truths about revival. Number one, revival is a God sent gift to the people of God. Mm, okay, all right. I believe that's, that's a gift he gives us. And we can pray for that. Think about people who are far from God. They don't know to pray for revival. They don't. Maybe their life is in the, in, the, in the dumpster and they're praying for God to show up. But they can't pray for a revival because they haven't yet been revived. And so the psalmist referred, refers exclusively to the actions of God when recalling past revivals. In verses 1 through 3, and in verses 5 and 6, it's God showed favor. God restored. God, God forgave, God covered, God set aside, and God returned. But look at verse 6. In verse 6, he says, Will you not revive us again so that your people may rejoice in you? Mm. Wow. See, the psalmist is, 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 
calling out revival specifically to the supernatural and the sovereign work of God as a gift that God sends to his people. Yeah. Will you not revive us again so that your people may rejoice in you? In other words, so that we as your people can give you credit, yeah. would you revive us spiritually? Yes. It's not on what we did. It's what you did, Lord. And so a revival is not an evangelistic crusade where far from God people come into the kingdom, although that is one of the fruits of a true revival. But a revival always starts among the people of God. Yeah. And that's why I said to me it's kind of a scary word. Because when I think of revival, I think of old school churches that bring in a preacher and they invite the entire community. Yeah. And for five nights straight, this guy preaches and yells and screams and slobbers and tells you you're going to hell and you better change your way. Under a tent. That drives me crazy. That's not the point of a revival. The revival, according to verse 6, starts with us. Yes. It starts with you, it starts with me. So we can have revival here. Children. So we can have revival out there. That's, That's right. right. Preach that. And so my goal in 2022 as we cast vision today is that a revival starts within you first. Woo! Yes. We can't see two people are really excited. <laughs> three. There's three. Three. There's three of us. That, 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 that's, that's, that's where we're going at you. Yes, we want to reach out. We want to do outreach. We want the community to come and, and understand who God is and how God loves them. But it can't start until it happens in us first. That's right. That's so right. So in 2022, if you were a member, regular attender of the Journey Community Church, if you were a follower of Jesus Christ, step number one, then you became a stronger disciple. That's, that's the first step. It starts tonight. Maybe you say, well, I didn't, I didn't sign up. I didn't know that big deal. Then just show up, all right? Amen. We'll pray over the food. We'll divide it. God will provide, all right? I don't know. But in, he's done plenty for people who have prayed over revival. There's been so many revivals. I started revival when I was in seminary. And I love revival. There's a book called uh, Let the Fire Fall. It's my favorite book I've ever read. It's all about revival. Wow. And I remember thinking, why doesn't that happen to me? Why doesn't that happen to me? We're not ready. That, that, that revival is a big deal. We're not ready. Psalm 85, the first three verses, he prays in essence, Lord, you've done it before. But in verses 4 through 7, he's saying, Lord, do it again. Do it again. We'll do it again. Do it again. Can we pray this year for the God of heaven to do it again? Because in verse 6, we have to recognize it clearly. God is sovereign, and He is the only one who can bring revival. Right. Nothing I can do, nothing you can do. It has to start with us. And God is the only one who can bring revival. It's His sovereign gift. But there are some things that God expects us to do to be in a position to receive revival should He choose to send it. I love how people sometimes pray for God to send a job, and they just sit around and don't go looking for a job because they pray for God to provide a job. Okay. Let me tell you the problem with that philosophy. God can't send you a job if you're not out looking for one, right? right. It's not God's job to get these people just to dial a random phone number and go, would you like a job? And it happens to be you, all right? That's not the way it works. There's effort we put in for God to do His work. And so there's certain things that we need to do. Number one, revival comes to those who hunger for God. Do you and if, that, if not, just be honest about it. Just say, well, be honest with you, now I know. That's right. That's okay. okay. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Let's fix that. Exactly. Let's change that. Whoa, 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 whoa. There's another term in Scripture for being hungry for God. Every time you see a word in Scripture that this phrase, drawing near to God. That's something we have to do. Yes. God, God, God is already near to us. We, can't, we should be praying, God, would you draw near to me? He's like, hey, yo, I'm right here. Right, right. Would you draw near me is what he said. And so that's why we see this thing over and over in Scripture. That God, we need to draw near to God. That's the place that the nation of Israel has come to in this song. They had been wandering in idol worship. They had been worshiping all these other things. They worshiped the Bengals. They worshiped the Cowboys. They worshiped whatever you fill in the blank. They worshiped all these other things. And God said, okay, get rid of all that and come worship me. Mm. 
Can I just tell you, as a Cowboys fan, I'm more spiritual than you Bengals fans today. You know why? <laughs> Watch this. My Cowboys won last night. I got nothing to worry about today. Woo! I'm kidding. I'm not, I am. <laughs> but I want you to notice what they did. They finally came to a place where they confessed their sin. Not only did they confess their sin, listen to me, church, they experienced repentance mm -hmm. and desperately wanted to hear from God again. Look at verse 8. Yep. I will listen to what God will say. Thank you. Surely the Lord will declare peace to his people, his faithful ones, and not let them go back to foolish ways. You know what he's talking about? Not let them go back to foolish ways? That's when they're talking about repentance. Yes. Repentance is not going, hey, I screwed up and I'm sorry. That's called confession. Repentance is where you go, hey, I'm face to face with my sin. This is not where I need to be. I need to go this way. Yeah. Good. Turning, getting away from that. And then in verse 8 at the very end, you can say, not let me go back to my foolish ways because I'm already going this way. Yeah. I'm already in repentance. I'm already moving away from that sin. Yeah, the Lord, please don't let me go back. That's what it looks like to experience that. And so practically speaking, one of the things that help keeps us from hearing from God, keeps us from experiencing revival, is sin. That's right. It, it serves as like that clog in the filter to everything that we're asking God to do. As long as we've got sin on our calendar, and you know what I mean by that, right? We already know that my week looks like this. I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't do that. We've got sin on the calendar. And until we clean that away, we've got issues. We got a clog in the filter. And we all James chapter 4, verse 8 is probably the most familiar verse in all the New Testament. If you know me very well, you know that James is my favorite book in all the Bible. But it says, Draw near to God, and he will, will draw near to you. He will. Cleanse your hands, you sinner. Purify your hearts, you double minded. In other words, quit showing up and saying, I love Jesus, I love Jesus. Then I even hear it and just wallow around in sin, right? Right, right. Sometimes we fall off the wagon. Those of us who do it well, we just roll around in the mud for a little while, right? And he's saying, cleanse your hands, you sinner. Purify your heart, you don't find it. And there, there's no... There's no such thing, I can't get the right word, but there's no such thing as being able to truly draw near to God while nurturing my confessing. It's not possible. And you want to tell you, it's not about nothing, but one of the things I can think about right now, one of the things that, as I read that, that book, uh, Let the Fire Fall, let me tell you one of the things that all of them are Confession of sin. Yeah. When people came out and confessed sin, man, the Bible fell. So here's what we're going to do. I'm kidding. <laughs> Some of you are like, oh crap, I should have stayed home today. <laughs> but no, seriously. <laughs> yeah, we can all come back if we really did that. That'd be awesome, right? Here, here's something else that keeps us from experiencing this. It's busyness. Good call. Yeah. I'm not sure we need to say a whole lot about this one, right? Yeah. Listen to me. When we're too busy to give God our time, there's a problem here. And this is not a guilt trip. This is not, if you don't show up to church, church you good. That's not what I'm talking about. Because there's plenty of people who, yeah, they, they don't show up to church all the time, but they're still spending a lot of time with God in their personal lives. Right. Now, let me just say it. It was on my Facebook this week, and I showed a lot of self-control by not responding. I don't think you can follow Jesus closely and not be involved the church. Yeah. yeah. There's nowhere in this Bible that is completely inerrant, which you're going to learn that term tonight. There's nowhere in this Bible that's completely intact, no errors, where anybody was a follower of Jesus and did it all of it. Yeah. There's no lone rangers in Christianity. So I, I believe as, as a follower of Jesus, you've got to be involved in the body somewhere. Yeah. God, I'm, <coughs> I'm not going to I'm not gonna stay on that. Can I just tell you, some of you know that I, I live with my cell phone in my pocket. Well, let me rephrase it. I used to live with my cell phone in my pocket. My wife takes my cell phone away. 
And so some of you are like, you always respond. Why are you not responding to me? Uh, she takes away from me. There's certain hours of the day when I'm at home and she goes, nope, you're not going to have that year again. Pray for God. It's just my life is busy. I'm always going, 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 going. Well, sometimes you just got to say no. And I do. This works great. So revival is a gift from God to those who hunger to hear from God. And here's the last one. Revival is preceded by getting revivals. Nice. Yeah. And we all Listen, have. I mean, we, we all got, I got, I got a list. All right, and we can pull out my list if you want. If you don't want to talk about your list, we can talk about mine. That's the sad part about Israel. That they were continually chasing idols. They continually just, just had things in their lives that were just so much better than God. Aaron molded calves to be worshipped in Mount Sinai. Yeah. Exodus 32. Yep. Solomon permitted his wives, his wives, now listen, he was the most wise man in all the scripture according to what I've read, so I think what I'm reading is we should have multiple wives. God, I'm lying, I'm lying, I'm lying. Bad. Solomon permitted his wives to build temples to their idols. Yeah. Jeroboam erected golden calves at Bethel and Dan. 2 Kings 12, 2 Chronicles 13. Yeah. Ahab's wife Jezebel led the northern kingdom into idolatry. Yeah, Every time I think about the northern kingdom, I think about what my wife says. What is it? I'm holy, but I'm also... But what is it? I'm holy, but I'm also... I don't remember what the other word is. She says she's from the south side of the kingdom. I'm just like, ah! That's good. Sorry, I'm an ADHD. How about this one? I'm half hood, half holy. I'm half hood, half holy. I'm from the south side of the kingdom. I'm going to make that shirt for her one day. <laughs> Actually, y'all work. Somebody make that shirt for me. Size me, women cut. All right, here we go. Manasseh, King of Judah. Y'all bought me a stupid looking suit. Make her my shirt, all right? <laughs> Somebody saw a picture of me and then suit the other day and they're like, what is that? I was like, don't even ask. Anyway, Manasseh, king of Judah, 2 Chronicles 33, wow. Filled Jerusalem with idols. Yeah. Idolatry. Yeah. So we gotta get rid of the idols. That's gotta be a part of what we do. We gotta just say, okay, Lord, whatever my idol is, I gotta get rid of it. And I'll be honest with you, one of my idols is my cell phone. If I'm not completely engaged right now, then I'm on my phone. And I just put it away, let it go. That's an idol for me. It really is. What's your idol? Maybe it's success. Maybe it's your status. Maybe it's pleasure. It's one of the blank. We all have them. And I'm not saying if you have a hobby that you love, then that's an idol. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying if there's something that just takes you away from your time with God, it doesn't allow you to spend time with God, that's an idol. Yeah. So my, my hope for you is that you get along with God. And then you remember this principle. There, there's no such thing as a revival until we clear sin from our lives. Mm -hmm. And we abandon our lives. So that, that's the formula. And we're, we're completely almost out of time. So let me just finish with this. Let me give you two tools for revival. I think they're self explanatory and just want to do this. But number one is, is confession. Many of the Israelites had become to enslave the idols while they were in Babylon, and now they're back in their own country. They're trying to figure out how do I live again? Look at verses one and two. Or, I'm sorry, two and three. He said, "You forgave your people's guilt. You covered all their sin." That's what he's referring to. We've just been released from Babylonian captivity. We've lived our lives surrounded by idols, worshiping idols, and now we're trying to change. Verse three: You withdrew all your fury. You turned from your burning anger. Confess your sin is to agree with God about your sin. They agreed, listen, Lord, while we were in Babylon, we were full of sin. We were chasing the idol. They agreed with God. And God forgave them. He removed his anger. He, he pulled his fury back from them. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Confession is usually preceded by something that we do not try to avoid as we do as, as a weakness, but it's something that God finds incredibly attractive in this concept of brokenness. Mm. When we are 
broken before God, God's like, oh, I got you. I got you. I got you. And let me tell you why broken is important. It's because I believe that there's reading through scripture that brokenness is a pathway to blessing. I believe that when we are broken over our sin, when we're broken over the things that remove us from God, that's when God says, man, I'm so thankful that you've opened your eyes, and that's when he begins to pour his blessing upon us. That's true. I believe that. Brokenness is the absence of all pride in it. Over, over, and over, and over again in Scripture, we're told that God resists us. When we come to that place of brokenness, and the things that we need most for God to, to draw near, for us to draw near to Him, they become possible. So confession is number one. Number two is, is repentance. We talked about, yes, confession is going, hey, this sin is ugly. I need nothing to do with anymore. Repentance is turning and going the other way. Yes. Yep. I was going my own way. I was doing my own thing. With God, I'm, 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 I'm running to you now. Repentance. And here's the last one. And this is going to lead us to the next one. It's forgiveness. Mm. That's powerful. Ooh. Show me a person who will not forgive somebody, and I'll show you a person who will never experience personal relationship. That's a hard truth. Wow. But I tell you what, we don't, we don't preach around the front of We preach right in the middle of it. We're just not angry about it. Show me a person who won't forgive, and I'll show you a person who will never experience true revival. Mm. How about this one? Show me a church body that will forgive. I'll show you a church body that will never experience revival. Listen, we'll go off through more of this next week. I can't get into it now. I want to die. But we're never going to experience corporate revival in church if we hold grudges. And I'm just going to be honest with your pastor. I'm struggling through some of that, all right? Not here, but I, I, I have some, some baggage. As a pastor outside these walls with other ministries. I'm just being honest with you. Good. And I've dealt with that in the past and, I, and it, it still hangs on. I've gone to some of those other ministries and I've said, we need to sit down and talk through some of this. And God has restored. Man, there's just still something that is just, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. But I also don't believe that just because there's forgiveness that you have to become best friends with that person. I believe you can forgive somebody and not have a relationship with them. I truly believe that. You know, let me, let, me, let me give you an example. The last church, I, well, the church that I moved here for over in Spring Grove, there's a guy up there who I love dearly, the amazing man. His mother was the first teacher in the United States that was killed in a school shooting. Mm. Years and years and years ago. And he and his family, while this man was in prison, forgave this man for what they did. They don't have a relationship with him. He ain't coming over to Christmas dinner. You get what I'm saying? I think you can forgive somebody not having a relationship. And I don't know if that's where I'm at, but there are some areas that I'm struggling with. But, but forgiveness is one of the non-negotiables of Jesus' revival. Here's the last one. Passionate and persistent prayer. Those dangerous prayers that you saw, that's one of those things, man, that is just brings revival. And so let me give you a myth of revival. We can experience revival as a church, but we can't. We don't have to experience revival as a church. I'm just going to tell you right now, church. This church will never experience revival corporately until we experience revival.
as opposed to the yes. It's not what we all do. Mm. Sometimes we're content walking in this room and sitting down and bringing nobody with us. My goal is that revival starts with you first. And you are restless. And you can't, you can't settle down and you can't relax. And so heaven starts getting a little bit Wow. And you're no longer content walking into to whatever facility or words we got in without knowing you've done your best to bring somebody along with you, without inviting somebody to hear the gospel. And you would no longer be content with just driving to church by yourself. So be ready. That's what we're going to be focused this year. We're going to be focused on personal revival, discipleship, becoming a stronger disciple so that we can go out reach people for God. That's where we're going. That's the vision of 2022. We are going to reach people in every community. Because that's where you live. But we're going to do it through you. Not always going to be the church that's going to come up in your backyard. It's going to be you. But we're going to equip you to do that. Those three things we're going to focus on 2022. Revival, discipleship, and outreach. That's where we're going. And so my prayer is that you make a commitment to join us on that journey for this year. Let's pray. Lord, as we move into year five, send a revival. Let us start right here. Let us start with every single person sitting in this room personally. Lord, I don't want to just read about great revivals of history. I want to be a part of it. Yes. So God, would you move in the hearts of your people? Would you allow us to pray for a personal revival? Would you allow us to, for our hearts to be broken, to grow in our relationship with you? God, if we're not growing, we're not going to reach people. <coughs> and I know it's important to you that we go personally, and that we go reach people. We are the plan X. Yes. The reason for this church is your plan X. Let us take that responsibility seriously. It's all I ask the church. Is God speaking to you? Well, before you leave, let's